Hey there, today we're going to prove that the composition of continuous functions is continuous. As a matter of fact, we're going to do this in metric spaces because I wanted to use epsilons and deltas, not neighborhoods. Um, maybe in a later video I'll prove this in uh, topological spaces instead of metric spaces, but the proof is virtually the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the additional assumptions that the functions are from a metric space to a metric space. You can think the real line, and any time I mention a metric, just use the absolute value of x minus y. Um, and in order to do this, we need the definition of continuity on a metric space. Um, basically, this means for every point, you are continuous at that point. So for every x in x, there, uh, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. If the distance between x and y is less than delta, the distance between their images is less than epsilon. That's really all we're going to use. Um, so if you look at it, what we have is we have two continuous functions. So this is really the only, only game in town. So we're just going to use this definition a couple times, smack them together. And be done with it. So let's set this up. In order to prove a composition of two continuous functions is continuous, you need to have two continuous functions. So let f and g from x to x be continuous functions. Now I could have done f from x to y and g from y to z and had a little bit more generality, but it's the exact same proof, it's just more bookkeeping. So we're also going to need a point. We're going to fix an arbitrary point in x. We're going to fix an epsilon greater than zero. And now we wish to show that f of g is continuous. Specifically, we're going to do that by showing that there exists a delta that satisfies the definition from the previous page with f of g. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have that f is continuous, and we have that g is continuous, so we better just write those out. And I'm going to do a little bit of hindsight here, and maybe you'll see why we did it this way. So, as f is continuous, there is a delta sub f greater than zero, such that for every z in x, so for every point in x, where the distance between g of, z, uh, g of x and z is less than delta f, we get that their images are less than epsilon. So if you think about it, we're trying to prove f composed with g is continuous. So f needs to be continuous not at x, it needs to be at g of x, because you're going to take x, you're going to hit it with g, and then you're going to hit it with f. So we need to have our continuity of f centered at g of x. Okay. Now as g is continuous as well, there's a delta g greater than zero. Well, del uh, g needs to be continuous at x. So for every y in x, if the distance between x and y is less than delta g, their images under g are less than delta f apart. Because now that looks a whole lot like the first part of our previous implication. That looks a whole lot like this uh, hypothesis here. This piece here looks a lot like this. In fact, what we're going to do then is we're going to then say, we can put these together and we can say, for every y in x, distance between x and y is less than delta g implies that the distance of f of g of x and f of g of y is less than epsilon because they just flow right into each other. It's actually what we have is just plug them together. Hence f of g is continuous. So what we did was we followed our nose here. We just said, okay, we know that f is continuous. Let's write it out. We know that g is continuous. Let's write it out. But we'd already fixed a point, we'd already fixed an epsilon, so we just kind of lopped off the quantifiers right up to that point where we have an arbitrary second point in the metric space. And then we have to think about what arbitrary point in the metric space do we need. Uh, we also need to think about what base point in the metric space we're going to 
prove it's continuous around uh, with G, it's going to be continuous around X. But with F, it needs to be continuous around G of X. But we have both those things because they're continuous everywhere. Okay, so F of G of X is continuous. Let's look at how this actual proof would be written up. So we're going to prove the metric space version of the com composition of two continuous functions as continuous. So we're going to let x comma d be a metric space. Um, <clears throat> and f and g from x to x be continuous functions. Fix an x in x, make that arbitrary. And an epsilon greater than 0, fix 1. So now we have our stuff. We have our setup. We show f of g is continuous at the arbitrary point x and is therefore continuous. Whenever you don't quantify it, you mean continuous on the whole space. As f is continuous, there exists a delta f greater than zero such that every z in x we have, distance between g of x and z is less than f, uh, delta f implies that their images are less than epsilon. Okay. As g is continuous, there exists a delta greater than zero. Notice we dropped the sub g because we know this is going to be our delta. Such that for every y in x, we have that the distance between x and y is less than delta implies that the distance between g of x and g of y is less than delta f. Observing the conclusion of the second implication satisfies the hypothesis of the first implication. In other words, this piece here is actually the same as this hypothesis here. It fits into that hypothesis, except uh, g of y is a special z, in particular that z. Uh, we have, for every y in x, the distance between x and y is less than delta, implies that f of g of x comma f of g of y is less than epsilon holds. Hence, f of g is continuous. So what this is, is uh, a priori, uh, we have um, we have for every z, if this is true, then this is true. I'm sorry. Uh, for every z, if this part's true, then this is true. So a priori, this specific z will work. So what we have is we, have, we start with a stronger statement and actually weaken it by feeding it through the functions. Anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if anything's not clear here. Uh, this is just a first analysis video I'm actually going to make, hopefully first of many. I'll see you in the next video.